I just was like, oh my God, am I always going to feel this way? Like, why can't I sustain feeling good for that long? Like, you know, when are things going to get better? When am I going to be able to feel happy for like weeks or months at a time? Like, when is that day going to come? You know, my approach with this is like just focusing on the movement and not worrying about how I look, like really creating the association that this plan of working out is about how I feel, not about how I look. For some people, you might be like, yeah, duh. But I don't know. For me, it was like, yeah. And I'm smiling right now because I'm proud of myself. Like I did that, you know? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today, we are just gonna get super cozy and have a much needed catch up session and kind of just like a heart to heart chat between friends. There has just been so much on my mind lately that for whatever reason I haven't been saying or um, hadn't necessarily processed all of the thoughts to be able to like come on camera and say it, but at the same time, it's been impacting I don't know if you guys can tell, but I feel like I've been a bit distant in my videos lately. Like I've been keeping my videos super topical and about like a certain subject. And that's because I just have been going through a bit of a hard time. And so I didn't feel quite comfortable like opening up or even that I could because I hadn't quite processed everything that I was feeling. Um, and I just felt very like all over the place, very like, going through the motions. Um, and after the past couple weeks, I've been reflecting and like journaling and just thinking a lot. And I feel like I've kind of recognized a few areas that I've been struggling in. Um, and I love to talk about these things with you guys because, you know, we're constantly going through similar things and like, it helps me to say them out loud and then connect with you guys in the comments and just know that like I'm not alone you guys aren't alone like I whenever I film videos like this and well really any of my videos I feel like I'm really talking with friends um, so thank you for being here thank you for watching this video before we start let me know in the comments how you guys are doing I really want to know and just like like I said reconnect um, today we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff there's so been so much on my mind. Um, I want to talk about self-sabotage. I want to talk about family stuff. I want to talk about body image. I want to talk about Instagram and trends. Um, and just like overall how I've been feeling these past couple weeks, this past month. Also, I'm very loungewear today <laughs> because it's like just a rainy, gloomy day. So I'm just sitting on the couch like filming a bunch of videos. My dog is next to me. Um, yeah, if you're wondering what I'm wearing, it's like a one shoulder thing. <laughs> Come, might, like, might look weird on camera, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna sit back because that's how we know I'm like relaxed and ready to chat. So I don't even know where to begin. Throughout the winter from January, the point where I got back from Florida um, to a couple weeks ago, I was just having a really hard time. Like I can honestly say I was going through hell. Losing my job was super traumatic. Um, and then I had this like upliftingness of like my YouTube kind of starting to take off, um, take off a little bit more and like finally feeling like free and being like, okay, like, yeah, like I don't wanna work corporate. I do wanna be a freelancer. I do wanna be a YouTuber. Um, but then having so much imposter syndrome, so much fear. And I was just like really in a dark place and also just outside, it was very bad. Like I know a lot of people were struggling just with like this winter and it was cold and it was dark. And so all of those things working together like put me um, in a pretty bad place. Uh, I did work with my therapist and I started focusing a lot on gratitude and that really started like uplifting me and pulling me out of that dark place um, and things were getting really better. And I would go so far as to say like things did a full 
180 um, where I was feeling really happy. I was feeling really calm. Like I remember being on the phone with my friends and just being like, I'm so chill right now. Like I'm so calm. It was like this completely different feeling that I hadn't felt in a really long time. Um, I felt secure because I felt like my YouTube was doing well. My contract was going well. I was getting a lot of hours. Um, I felt like I was moving back into like a secure place and I was bouncing back from this job loss and you know winter was starting to lighten up and I just felt like there was hope for everything. I really was starting to feel better. This, this is where we get to the Ottawa vlog, okay? So I w went to Ottawa feeling really good and Ottawa is a funny place, okay? Ottawa is the city where I grew up um, and it's where most of my family lives. My mom, my dad, my sister, my stepmom. I have two stepmoms, but one of my stepmoms lives there. Um, the other one lives here in Montreal. And sometimes I go to my hometown and I relax and recharge and feel amazing and it's a good time. And sometimes I go there and I am so anxious. I am so stressed. It's like bad memories come up, childhood shit, you know, driving past the school that I was bullied at or whatever it may be. It's, it's a very funny place that like these memories can come back. So sometimes I don't have a good time when I go. Um, and this past time was an experience like that where I went there feeling good um, and then you guys saw in that vlog, I got into a big fight with my mom and that just like ruined things, ruined my mood. Um, it was just, it was horrible. And then after that, I had like my IUD put in, which didn't go super well. Like it's fine, but it was a very lonely experience. Um, and then I drove back from Ottawa to Montreal and I was just like drained. Like I was so sad, all of that good mood that I had been feeling wiped away. Um, and then things kept getting worse because as I was speaking in therapy with my therapist about this stuff with my mom, it was bringing back all of these old, old, old memories of like things that happened when I was a teenager, things that happened when I was a kid, like other fights that I've been in with my mom and like, you know, it's just, yeah, it, it brought back a lot of negative things, which just put me into this, like, kind of like back into the hole, you know? It just put me, like, put me back into that hole that I was feeling. And then having gone from feeling so happy to so gloomy again, it just really, like, I just was like, oh my God, am I always going to feel this way? Like, why can't I sustain feeling good for that long? Like, you know, when are things going to get better? When am I going to be able to feel happy for like weeks or months at a time? Like, when is that day going to come? You know, that's what I was feeling. I also realized that in that period, since I got back from Ottawa, I started self-sabotaging so hard. Um, so self-sabotage is like when you get in your own way, um, or when you like ruin things for yourself. And a big one that I do is I stop working. And I think it's a mix of like anxiety plus self-sabotage, but I will like just lie in bed. You know, I'm like, I don't want to work. I don't do anything. I will procrastinate. I will put tasks off. I will ignore things. Um, and then what ends up happening is all of this stuff builds up and you just really get in your own way. And then you're more stressed. You're, you have more work to do than you needed to. You know, it, it can put you behind financially. Like if I wasn't, so yeah, if I wasn't like going out there and asking for more hours from my contract, well, I'm not getting any money. So financially I'm behind now. Like all of these things, I just really got in my own way and it was just like super negative. And then when I realized that that's what I was doing, that I was getting in my own way, it wasn't like a switch of a flick of a switch and like suddenly I'm better. Like I'm still just right now kind of like, oh, like why did I do that? Why do I always do that? Like how can I do better and sustain doing better? Like that is what I'm currently thinking about. I think another thing related to self-sabotage that happens is like when these old memories come up, when I'm, when I'm in that place, 
I stopped feeling worthy of good things. I stopped feeling worthy of happiness. I stopped feeling worthy of success. And like that will contribute to my self-sabotage as well, right? So if I don't feel worthy of feeling good, I might eat something that makes me feel like shit, for example. Um, or I might, like a big one that I do is I stop grocery shopping. I'm just like, I don't want to grocery shop. I'm not doing it. And then I eat out. I spend more money. I feel more like shit because like I'm eating like, you know, less healthy food, whatever it may be. Um, and it's just like this feeling of unworthiness that's, it's so unnecessary. Whoever you got in a fight with or whatever you did wrong that day, you like, sometimes, you know, like I'll, I'll do a bad job parking and then I'm like, oh my God, I'm not worthy, right? Like, why does that matter? Why does like, why do those things dictate how we feel about ourselves? Like they shouldn't. So I know the answer is really to go back to that place of gratitude because gratitude helps me feel more worthy. Um, so I need, to, I need to go back to that gratitude because that's what's going to uplift me and like bring me, bring me back to the surface again. Um, I started working on creating these gratitude pages in Canva because I like the five minute journal, but it's not like perfect for me. So I wanted to create something that would be perfect for me. I'll put like some pictures up on the screen. Let me know if you guys would want me to make these available like as a PDF publicly. Um, I feel like they could be fun to like print out and we can work on our gratitude together. Um, but yeah, I started working on those things when I was in like my really good place because I was like, oh my God, this gratitude is helping me so much. And then I stopped working on them because I st stopped feeling, feeling grateful and stopped just, yeah, wasn't in that good mood anymore. So I wrote down in my notes for this video, how long do you let something bother you? And I was talking about this thing with my mom um, and I wrote this list like last week and it still bothers me. Like I think about it every single day. I think about it every day, multiple times a day. Um, so I don't know the answer to how long can you let something bother you? Like, I don't know. I think for me, the ticket is gonna be just to like, try and transfer my focus and really keep focusing on myself, keep working out, keep working on YouTube, keep doing things that I love, keep having fun, keep seeing my friends. Um, and then maybe that will push out like some of those negative thoughts. But like if either way you're gonna have those thoughts, like you may as well do something fun <laughs> or do something good for yourself um, rather than just like sit on the couch and be mopey if either way you're gonna have those thoughts. So. Yeah, I don't mean to be like a total downer, but like I just want to be so honest about what's going on in my life because no matter how honest I can be in a vlog or a video, it's still a form of a highlight reel. Like obviously this isn't, but in a way it is because I've got a ring light in front of me. I like made sure my hair looked nice. Uh, I put on a top that makes me feel good. Like. So even like, you know what I mean? Everything can always still be a highlight reel. I'm like, I always want to show you guys like the most real me and the most real version of my life and the behind the scenes and the shit that goes on in my head. Because like, and this will, this will transfer into my next subject, but like I've been, I've been watching a lot of YouTube and I've been spending way too much time on Instagram and like, I just fall so much for that like perfect influencer life uh, stuff and I don't want to contribute to that. But yeah, let's talk about that. So in with my like anxiety and my feeling down, I've just been like always on Instagram and seeing pictures of like those influencers on vacation, those influencers at the Revolve trip, I'm just like, oh, like... My outfits aren't cute enough. My body's not fit enough. My hair's not long enough. My this, my that, everything. Everything not enough. Um, and that's been really hard. And I keep telling myself, like, just delete Instagram again. Like, who cares? Like, just delete it. You do better. Like, I do better when I don't have Instagram on my phone. But then I keep feeling this pull to keep it because I'm like, well, what if a brand wants to do a sponsored Instagram post? What if someone DMs me? And like, I get a lot of really nice DMs and I'm like, oh, I don't wanna like, and like I miss a bunch of them because I'm so bad at like 
answering my DMs. I'm really sorry if you ever DM me and I don't answer right away. Um, but you know, I'm like making all these excuses for keeping Instagram when really it's doing way more harm than good to me. So yeah, I think like I have one thing that I need to post because it is for a brand. I'm gonna do that today and then delete Instagram. But I want to talk about this trend that's been going around Instagram and a little bit on YouTube and like TikTok and that is the that girl trend. I cannot explain to you guys how up this trend is and how much it has with me. Like at first I thought it was like kind of positive because I was like, oh, like, you know, waking up early and movement and green juice. But the more I saw it, the more I felt bad about myself um, because I wasn't necessarily waking up earlier. I wasn't drinking my green juice every day. I don't have a Pilates reformer in my house or I don't go to Pilates and my, my workout clothes aren't from Lululemon all the time or from Sit Active or whatever the hell it may be. And I don't know, like, it's funny because I feel like we took a turn on Instagram towards being more real and then TikTok and Reels made things go back to that like very curated highlight reel because that's what a Reels, like a Reels or a TikTok, like it is a curation, like people will be like, week in my life, but it's literally a highlight reel. It is aesthetic short snippets of a video of like sunset, green juice, coffee, like is that all that there was in your week? Because in mine, I was also crying, stressing, working, uh, walking my dog, picking up my dog's shit. Like, you know what I mean? Well, walking my dog is honestly pretty much usually highlight real stuff, but picking up the poo isn't, right? And yeah, I don't know. Those reels were just, there was like a few creators in specific too that I would kind of like, like I would watch them feel bad about myself, but because I watched them, the algorithm kept giving them to me. And it was kind of like, again, this like self-sabotage thing of being like, I know I shouldn't be watching this content, telling myself that I wasn't good enough because I didn't look like that. I didn't have that, I didn't whatever. So it's really messed up. <laughs> it's really messed up. I did see this uh, TikTok though, that made me feel really good. I like downloaded it and I go back and watch it. And it was basically like an anti that girl uh, TikTok. I'm gonna put it here, let's watch it. Hi, my name's Natalia, and I have a few things to say about the that girl trend. While this trend might look aesthetically pleasing, healthy, and inspirational, it can be very toxic in the way that it only shows the highlights and can lead to lots of unhealthy comparison of what a healthy and productive lifestyle should look like. For younger girls, it can put the idea that in order to be beautiful, you have to be her. Her is someone who wakes up before 7 a.m., is obsessed with Pilates, has a green juice every morning, and a minimalistic apartment. The reality is not everyone can afford to go to Pilates every day and sometimes a green juice just doesn't sound appetizing. Most videos I've seen of this trend are privileged white girls and it doesn't take account of mental health or finances. Like what if I want to wake up at 11am one day and skip a workout and go out? I'm still that girl because I'm listening to my body and letting myself rest while also prioritizing balance. The that girl trend makes health seem more aesthetic than the actual practice of taking care of yourself. Even myself as a health and wellness content creator, it has become very overwhelming seeing these videos and feeling like I am not enough because I was tired and decided to not wash my dishes last night. No one should feel like they're not enough because of a certain aesthetic that is not one size fits all. We are all unique and have our own versions of health, so instead of seeing the girl drinking her green juice at 7am and you're feeling inadequate because you're waking up at 10am and you still live with your parents or your apartment's messy, Please just know that you are enough and I'm so freaking proud of you. Yeah, so like, I just really like that one because it covers a lot of things of like, what if you don't want to do your dishes that day? What if you don't have the money to go to Pilates? What if you don't like, you know, like all of those things. Um, and that brings me to my next subject, which is uh, body image. <laughs> so you guys may remember I had started a couple months ago I started in January um, doing health coaching with this girl uh, I found the girl on Instagram I really liked her page and she was a health coach or is a health coach and 
you know, claimed to be a specialist in, in certain things. So I started doing the coaching with her and at first I really liked it, but then I realized like it was kind of becoming toxic for me because one, doing the health coaching, I became obsessed with how I looked and obsessed with what I was eating. And I would look in the mirror and every day check for results that like, it's like slow down, slow down, you know? Um, I did feel like kind of instant results of like, it really reduced my bloating because she kind of helped me cut out certain things that I was like probably intolerant to. So I did see like an instant result. And then, you know, it was just like, whatever. I also didn't feel like I was getting the most personalized treatment from her or program. Um, I didn't feel like I was getting what I was promised. I didn't feel like I was getting what I was paying for. So all that to say, I stopped the health coaching um, and I wanted to let you guys know because I did come on here and kind of promote it. Um, so I didn't feel like I need to tell you that I'm not doing that anymore. It wasn't, I don't think health coaching in general wasn't right for me, but I think with that person specifically, it wasn't right for me. Um, and the other thing was like the conjunction, the combination of the health coaching plus like her Instagram and like her being an influencer, like her being an influencer kind of made me feel intimidated to be fully honest and be super vulnerable in our meetings because I felt like she was perfect. Um, I honestly think that I felt like she was perfect and that if I hired her, she would give me the roadmap to perfection. Very deep. But on that same note, something that has been helping me tremendously is staying on my healthy journey. I don't need that person, it's fine. I stopped the services. Um, but working out and working out consistently has been amazing. It helps my mood, my mental health so much, like so much. Um, and just having that consistency and that time away from my house and my responsibilities and my phone every day, it's just been amazing. Um, so I've been going to a gym and I've been doing classes at the gym and I've also started working out on like a personal training app called Copilot and I really like that as well. So I do the classes and then I also am doing running and a once a week like strength training at the gym and I just use my condo gym uh, for that because my gym it's just classes. And yeah, so far on this program like it's been really good and my approach with this is like just focusing on the movement and not worrying about how I look, like really creating the association that this plan of working out is about how I feel, not about how I look. And that is, that is like the game changing difference is that how you look doesn't matter if you feel good. And if you feel good, you will look good because you'll have that feeling and you'll glow and you'll love your body and respect your body. Um, and you'll look in the mirror and just be happy because you feel good, right? But if you're just focusing on certain looks related results, like you're never gonna feel good. You're never gonna be satisfied. At least I don't think I will. Now, the next thing that I wanted to update you guys on is meditation. So I tried a few different meditation apps. I think I, I maybe only tried one on camera. I was trying the Superhuman app. Um, it was like 40 bucks a month or 200 bucks a year. So I did my two week trial and then I canceled it because that is just way too expensive. I didn't feel like it was worth it. And if I'm being completely honest, I didn't feel like they were real meditations. And now I don't know if such a thing exists as a real meditation, but I feel like the definition of meditation is like sitting still and sitting in quiet and like, a guided meditation is okay, but like complete talking the entire time, I don't know if that's real meditation. And then especially when it's like, oh, this is a walking meditation. Like, is that a real thing? Because now I'm just walking. So I didn't feel like I was getting the results that I needed. I feel like those that app was way more just like positive affirmations. Like it's a great app, but like you can get the same thing for free elsewhere. So I canceled that. I tried Headspace next. Um, because that was the most requested one by you guys and it was fine but I still didn't feel myself like going to use it all the time so I didn't want to pay for it so I canceled that 
and yeah, I'm just back to not medita meditating. Uh, one of you guys messaged me on Instagram. I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't remember the name of the person who messaged me, but she sent me a really lovely message and was just like, if you, if your goal with meditating is to spend more time away from your phone and really like connecting to yourself, then having an app guide you and do those meditations with you it completely defeats the purpose. And I was like, oh my God, so right. And she explained to me how she meditates. She just sits quietly and envisions like a light washing over her. And I thought that was really nice. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to be working towards too, is like, even if it's just for one minute, just sitting down for one minute um, and just breathing and envisioning that light. I've also had some yoga teachers say that you can do like a uh, like two kind of syllables. So there was one that we did in class one time that was so hum and that one was really good. And you can just sync your breathing with that. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of trying it and doing it. But yeah, no more meditation apps for me. Uh, none of them stuck. Now the last thing I wanna talk about you guys is skiing, <laughs> skiing actually. Uh, skiing has been a funny thing and the ski season has closed, it is over. And I wanted to share with you guys some of the reflecting that I did during my last session of skiing because I learned a pretty valuable lesson. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I never went skiing. Skiing was reserved for the rich kids. Uh, I had friends who were skiers and they got new ski gear every year and they had their season pass and I was always so jealous. And I would always tell my dad, please, can we go skiing? Please, can we go skiing? He was like, too expensive, too expensive, too expensive. We're not going skiing. I went skiing a couple times with those friends who were avid skiers. I went like once with them on a day pass and they like taught me how to ski and it was so much fun. Um, so I, I've skied a handful of times in my life, but I've always wanted to do it more. And when I bought my car, I told myself like, this car is your ticket to going skiing. It's your ticket to doing those things that you've never done before. Um, so no more excuses. So me, my best friend Camilla and my boyfriend, we all bought a night pass to go skiing. And that's what we did. I rented my skis, so did Camilla. We rented our skis for the season. I spent a bunch of money on the pass. I spent a bunch of money on gear. And I was like, this is a worthwhile investment, okay? So the first time we go skiing, I'm so bad and I'm scared and I'm slow and Camilla's good and JS is good and I'm just like this and it was cold and I was miserable and I wanted to be like a kid and like take off my skis and like throw them and never touch this sport again. But I couldn't because I made a commitment. I spent all this money and you know, my friends like held me accountable as well. So we went skiing pretty often, like almost every week, uh, for many weeks, like throughout the season, there were some times where we took a break, but you know, we went almost every week, let's say. And every week I did not like it. Leading up to going skiing, I had a pit in my stomach. I didn't want to go. The entire time we were on the hill, I was just like afraid, anxious, thinking about other things, freezing cold, thinking about food, thinking about when can I leave. I, I did not like skiing. And as the season was wrapping up, I hadn't admitted that to JS or to Camilla that I didn't like it. I was just kind of like low key miserable the whole time. But I finally admitted to them. I was like, guys, I don't like this. I don't enjoy this. And I think they were pretty like disappointed, but it felt so good for me to like get that off my chest. And then one day we went skiing and we brought some other friends with us and it was a little bit warmer and I don't know what happened, but my fear lifted and oh my God, I had fun. I had so much fun. And that night I was like, guys, I love skiing. Let's buy our passes for next year. So we bought our passes and we still went a couple times after that. And from that day on, I really liked skiing. It was like a flip switched in my head. And what I realized, and these were my thoughts in that last round, that last day of skiing was like, I think as an adult, when we grow up, we stop doing things that we're not good at. Like we don't wanna, we don't wanna embarrass ourselves. We don't wanna fall. We don't wanna get hurt. We don't wanna be bad. We don't like to look at our friends and they're good and, and you're bad. And it's like, 
I think oftentimes like I'll try something if I'm bad at it I never touch it again but this forced me to work through something that I was not good at and forced me to just practice and keep going and become better like I'm still not good but I'm way less scared I'm having way more fun and it was just like this light bulb moment of if you stick with something and you practice it you will get better you will like we know this we knew this when we were kids like I used to have to practice piano right and I was bad at it and I I hated practicing piano actually. I think that's it. I think I've always not liked things that I'm good at and I've always had this kind of quitter mentality, but it's like for the first time in a very long time, I didn't like something, I stuck it out. I changed my mindset a little bit. I just was like, okay, just try it, like keep going. I, I think it was the time when we were so many people and watching them all have fun and I was kind of like, I can choose to let go of my fear and join in this fun or I can be the party pooper in the back. And so I think that's what happened. But for the first time ever, or for the first time in a long time, I stuck with something, I got better at it and I ended up loving it. And like, what a valuable lesson to learn, right? So that felt very uplifting to just finally feel good at skiing and to have like my boyfriend and my best friend be like you're so much better and now I'm really looking forward to next ski season like I'm excited to ski again and I'm I'm really happy and it just feels really good so I want to share that story with you guys because you know whether it's skiing whether it's swimming whether it's work whatever it may be like you can keep practicing and get better at something and this just encouraged me to keep trying new things like my next challenge is going to be running outside i've always tried it and was like eh, i'm bad at it stop but like why not keep trying keep trying and i'll get better right like i don't know it's for some people you might be like yeah duh but i don't know for me it, it was like yeah and i'm smiling right now because i'm proud of myself like i did that you know and i'm this summer just watch me guys i'm gonna be good at running um, and I think that will make for some good vlog content too, is like getting better and better at running outside. So anyway, we started kind of negative. We worked our way into the positive. Um, but that is just what's been on my mind lately. What's been going on in my life, uh, behind the scenes, behind the curtain, uh, <laughs> from the depths of my heart to yours. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know how you've been doing in the comments. Um, and let me know if you have any video request ideas. I've been filming a lot and uploading way more frequently. So I'm taking note of a lot of the requests that you guys have and uh, making sure that I film them pretty quickly. So let me know any requests. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this life update, heart to heart chat. And uh, I think we should do these more frequently. What do you guys think? Let me know. All right, I'll see you in my next video.